How goes it all? Welcome back to Larry's and Thing Goes. Hopefully you guys are having a great day. Sorry for my nasally voice. You know, it's officially springtime and this and the pollen is kicking me in the butt. So, you know, what are you gonna do? But the show must go on, right? But anyways, I'm gonna be talking about a, another subject that's near and dear to my heart. Really talking about um, the automation boom that we're experiencing now and the automation boom of the future. Now, I'm currently reading this book by uh, current presidential candidate and entrepreneur Andrew Yang, and I'm not getting on any political any nonsense or anything of that nature, but I am very interested in the whole automation, um, inf uh, auto automation, artificial intelligence um, movement that's going on right now and how it's going to affect me and how it's going to affect everybody else around the world, not just the United States, but around the world. So. I figured I'd write, a, write a, um, make a video about this and it's very interesting the more I learn because I, like I said I love to learn and obviously if you consider yourself an entrepreneur you want to keep yourself learning and uh, something new every day and this this automation boom that's going on right now and that's going to get even more bigger than it already is it's going to be a massive influx of more automation taking away people's jobs um, it's going to be interesting how the United States is going to be affected by this automation. So that's why I am making this video and I find it to be very interesting as far as especially I'm halfway through the war on normal people. And it's very, very interesting, you know. So it's going to be a correction into a lot of different things. And a lot of people are going to lose their jobs. Other jobs will be created, but it's just going to be who's who's got the entrepreneurial spirit, who's educated enough for those jobs that are in play. So all these, there's multiple things that are going to be involved in with the automation of boom. So that's just my personal opinion on it. Other experts have their opinions and and we're just going to have to see what happens in the long run. So, but I'm not really going to talk just all about the book. Talk about certain aspects of the book, of the war on normal people. And I advise you to get it. Very good read. Listen to the auto version, whatever works for you. Definitely I'll forget it. Um, I do want to talk about the automation that's coming. So new economies are structured under the boom and bust category. We all know this. We've seen all these booms and busts, you know, from the recession in 2007, from the um, housing bubble, you know, with the housing bubble, um, from the uh, dot-com bubble. There's always a bubble somewhere. That's how the economy works. That's why they say when you're making good money, no matter what it is, if you're making good money, do your darndest to save it, not just spend it. <laughs> Or if you're going to spend it, a lot of it, invest in it, with it. It's a simple concept. So, but you know, with the United States of America, we are in the automation, replacing human humans phase right now, and it's a big, big thing. And more and more jobs are not just going overseas anymore; they are being replaced by robots. <laughs> you know, and that's um, it's just a real thing. <laughs> this is I'm not making this up. It's been going on for years now, and it's just, it's growing and growing and growing as far as more and more apps and, and uh, automated systems and robots taking people's jobs away or not even having people's jobs are not really as important as it used to be because, you know, they're being taken over. So it's something to look at it. And it's not just, um, quote unquote, what people consider menial jobs. Um, I, to me, a job's a job. That's why I don't use that term. But that's what people could consider it. Uh, with that being said, a lot of white collar jobs, you know, high end jobs and high, you know, blue collar jobs are going to disappear. Uh, with the exception of like plumbers and electricians and carpenters, I think you're still going to have a good need for those trades people, those skill trades people, because there's a there's a massive um, drought in trades people right now. They they need a lot more trades people than they have more trades jobs available than they do people, which is crazy, you know. But the book was on. The book, uh, The War on Normal People, it really uses examples of mostly the truck driving industry because that's one of the biggest industries that are, uh, makes a lot of money, has a lot of power, and they have a, a, another industry that has a lot of jobs but don't have enough people, especially when people hear the rumors about the trucking industry go, um, go, being automated. You don't have that many people jumping the lines, hey, I want to be a truck driver, pick me, pick me. You're not going to see that. So... <laughs> It just it doesn't make any sense. And then obviously you're going to have a lot of truck drivers who are going to be hurting when this phenomenon con um, continues to grow. So I'm not saying I'm a, I'm a fan of it. I'm not saying I'm against it. I'm just talking about what's going on. And I'm hoping that 
whoever listens to me or anybody else that you have a backup plan because we, we know we've known this for decades now um, especially since the 90s that there's no such thing as a secure job anymore so I'll leave it at that <laughs> like I said no political nonsense this is just facts we know since the 90s there's no such thing as a secure job anymore and that's why my generation the younger generation we jump around from job to job because we're chasing the dollar and if you're smart about it you're chasing the dollar you're saving the dollar and you're investing your dollar that's just my opinion on that. so but um back to the story at hand um the book even talked about how a lot of high paying jobs like medical doctors lawyers in some cases will be affected in the long future and be replaced by robots at all at the same time i mean great example i use a personal example so back in the day you'd have to use excuse me you'd have to use to, to open up a limited liability corporation llc most people would have to go down to a courthouse or go to a lawyer and have them fill out all the paperwork for you nowadays you have multiple websites where you can utilize legal zoom or whomever to do it for you with your state <laughs> you know so register your you know to create your business register it and go through all the paperwork all that is done online now. you know so that and that's something i did with my businesses with the there's anything goes business you know make it official when i sell my products um i have to sell properties when it comes to buying real estate you know that's i i utilize a specific service online i didn't have to talk to anybody <laughs> you know i filled out all the stuff online they gave me a date when i received my package and when my package was on its way there was no real communication outside of emails. So that just that's a, to me that's a great example of you know automation for from a legal aspect, you know. Um, and then I even heard you know reading the book, um, the War on Normal People, uh, Andrew Yang was talking about how a lot of um, medical doctors nowadays are working remotely. I didn't see something I didn't realize. A lot of medical doctors are you know doing specific examinations via VTC, via Skype, <laughs> you know, and I'm just like, okay, but this is, we, we do live in a digital age, and this is not, you know, anything uncommon nowadays. They do specific, you know, consultations via cell phone. I mean, and they could be in the Bahamas somewhere on vacation once they got internet access, hey. So, this is the world we live in. <laughs> you know, it's like, um, it's, it's crazy, but, you know, it's apparent, even apparently the book is talking about how certain doctors are actually performing medical procedures. Um, they actually have like a robot doing the procedures, but they're just directing the robot, robot from another location. So that tripped me out too. But, you know, like I said, I'm not a fan of that. I'm not, I wouldn't, you know, you need to be there. But, you know, I, I think that's just the beginning stages. But this is the direction that you see robots going, artificial intelligence going. Whether people want to believe it or not, it's happening. So instead of complaining about it, figure out how you can utilize it and, and make a profit from it. That's just all I can say. Or, or from anything outside of the just getting a regular job box. Because we know those days are dying in a fast, fast way, faster than you think. And you have to be prepared. That's, you know, it's like I said, I mean, especially my military folks, they know they always got to be prepared for war. So, so from an entrepreneurial standpoint, be prepared for economic um, prosperity and economic downturns all at the same time, you know, not being doom and gloom, it's just the reality of certain things. So I leave it at that. So uh, when you get down to the brass tactics of all this, the question is, what would you do if you lost your job to automation today? And that's why I have the reasons to save on here for emergencies, which that is one, big purchases, whether it's a house or a car or whatever, you have to replace a furnace or something to that effect. Um, money for education, you might have to get re-educated and you might have to come out of your own pocket. You know, low risk uh, to play a uh, place to store your money. You know, hey, put your money in low risk investments like uh, little mini stocks and bonds and whatnot. You know, real estate, definitely, preferably real estate. Or just put it in your savings account. Now, just having it in your savings account, yes, you're losing value. But it's better to, for your money to be in a savings account than it is for um, you just spend it on frivolous nonsense. And, uh, full disclaimer, yes, I'm not an accountant. I'm not giving financial advice. I'm just giving um, I'm just giving some good things that I do with my money and how you and it works works out for me 
because you just never know. The, you know, car breaks down, the AC has to be prepared, heater has to be prepared. Stuff happens. And if you continuously spend your money like, like there is no tomorrow, then hey, tomorrow might come and it might not be the tomorrow that you want. That's my personal opinion on that one as well. So saving your money is a good thing, especially if you don't come from money. That's just my personal opinion, you know. And another thing is, you have to, you know, pe we need people to be more movers and shakers. That's one thing I like about my generation. You know, nowadays when it comes to everything, you gotta be a mover and a shaker. You know, and to quote the great, unfortunately late, late Nipsey Hussle, who was killed recently, um, he stated this, and I, it was like one of the realest statements ever. You know, when you start making money, you're supposed to invest into assets, not liabilities. People in your life can be liabilities. Family members can be liabilities. Your significant other could be a liability. Anything can be a liability. Anything that's continuously sucking you dry financially and is not contributing, that's a liability, period. And anybody who's around you that aren't talking about doing uh, different things and making big moves, that's a liability, okay? Because if you're in the same place in 2019 that you were in 2013, then that's a problem. And I'm a call like I said. That means you're not really making any moves and you're not trying to. So, I mean, I, I've seen people who can't even speak the English language be in a different place and at a higher level in 2019 than they were in 2013. So, let's just stop the nonsense. Doesn't mean you're going to be rich, but it just means you're making some sort of a move. Okay? And with robots, that's why a lot of people are, ha are getting the people who are creating the robots are jazzed about it because they know it's going to up the productivity. <laughs> The people's businesses and then they won't have to worry about people taking sick days off health insurance pensions 401ks all that you know severance packages all that's out the window when it comes to a robot <laughs> you know so that's what i said this is what's happening how are you going to counter all of this we have to think differently and think better and not waste so much freaking time on things that don't make us money you know and be a, a, a pool or fountain of useless knowledge is not cool in your in your 30s and up. I've, and, I've, and I hear people who are my age in 30s, in their 30s, filled with all this useless information and, and it can't, doesn't make them money. I'm just like, are you serious? <laughs> like when I was a teenager, I got it. That, it made sense to have that mindset. But as an adult, whew, that's just my personal opinion. I'll leave it at that. So, you know, because, and then, you know, another thing he, he said, not only about that, but he said, um, you know, since we have huge amounts of insecure people out here nowadays, most people have liabilities. Like Nipsey Hussle stated, you know, that, you know, cars and, and diamonds are nice. He said, man, but, he, you know, at the time he was younger, he was like, I want to invest in real estate. <laughs> He's like, I know that's the that's one of the pillars of wealth. I want to invest in the real estate. And I just, you know, that's what we need more of that mindset. And he was in his early 20s talking like that. So that just that just means a lot. Just a different mindset before he even quote unquote made it in the music industry. You know, made you know made it with his with his clothing line. You know, that's that was his mindset, and it's all mindset is everything. Forget about what you heard. Mindset is everything. So, and even you know nowadays, even with a lot of Uber and Lyft drivers who are making their money, and I've got a lot of respect for them. Um, you know, they're making a great living nowadays, and but they stem to lose their jobs if automation when it comes to self-driving vehicles comes into existence for them. And the word is that it is. And, you know, it's like, what are you going to do? You know, it's like we live in a time where people are supposed to be more smarter and educated. So therefore, it's like, you know, start thinking of what are you going to do if specific situations do occur. You know, that's just how I look at it. Excuse me. So now this is the very... This is very serious given the fact that 40% of U.S. adults don't have enough savings to cover a mere $400 emergency. You know, and that's very scary. The medium savings account balance across the United States household is $4,830. And I think that's even a little much given the fact that most people I know don't even have $1,000 to their name in the bank account. They just have enough to keep their bank account awake. I mean, awake keep the bank account open so it's 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 it, these numbers can be skewed but i just think that you know the mindset needs to change and when you have a, a median that's considerably lower than the national average so the national average is supposed to be sixteen thousand dollars in people's savings account which i still think that's a bit much 
but that's just my personal opinion. Uh, but it means that most people have less than the average. So with the growth of smart stores, artificial intelligence, it's taken away more cashiers jobs like you wouldn't believe. I mean, just the other day I was at the Safeway and I noticed that um, at the Safeway they had um, self checkout machines. They finally been set up. And also if you go to most grocery stores nowadays, most of the cashier re cashier registers are empty. And it, you have about, what is it, about seven to 10 um, cashiers in a grocery store, uh, but most of them are empty. Usually they have only two to three people working. And now that you have the self-checkout, you only have one person working. So it's just like, you know, you need to, we need to put this into perspective here, people. You know, you really do, you know, it's like, and matter of fact, one of the people who uh, used to be the cashier, now she's the monitor. So she's monitoring everybody who's at the self-checkout to ensure that nobody's you know, stealing or anything of that nature. So, it's, it's the world we live in, and I know you, you've seen it, you know, you know like give me a, a hand clap or something if you, if you see this when you go to the store. Even if you do go to the store, because most people nowadays, they can order their food and it can come to their house. I know Giant does it, I think Safeway's about to do it, and other grocery stores are doing the self-delivery, I mean the, the, the grocery deliveries nowadays. I mean, so, <laughs> I mean, we, we are in the time of automation. We are in a different time, so. And some say that automation equals opportunity. It depends on how you look at it. Because, you know, in one of the articles I read, it stated, and I quote, that everybody's always claimed that automation is going to take away these jobs. It's going to be massive layoffs and et cetera and so forth. And even right now in America, there are a lot of jobs that are unfulfilled in the United States. But most of the main reason for that is because they, it's not, it's not because people don't want to work. It's because a lot of people don't have the skill sets. You know, but that's education. That's a whole other topic, and I'm not gonna get into that today. <laughs> but so they state they state that a lot more job opportunities are gonna come available. They don't know what they are, but they're gonna come available. But the downside is, it's gonna be my personal opinion. I'm sure others have their opinions on this as well. Is that with those jobs that come in that we don't even know what they're going to be, most people probably not even gonna be educated enough to have those jobs. So I have a bunch of master's degrees in. in bachelor's degrees but it's going to be in things that have nothing to do with those new jobs that are created that's why the tech companies have to go outside of the country and get talent to um, come in or they have to open up shop in other foreign countries because those countries are actually educating their people on the jobs of today and the jobs of tomorrow you know so but that's another story for another day you know but and it's crazy and i and i and i read a little um i'll end this video off with the uh, statement that i read from the cop this um, article uh, from it was actually a uh, Wall Street Journal and it says and I quote it sounds like a dismal statistic doesn't it? but one in five jobs however the century for cities uh, paints a surprisingly positive picture saying that despite the probability of job losses there will be an overall increase in jobs by 2030 and it says it's gonna be an increase of jobs by 2030 I don't dispute that the only thing is I say is is it going to are we still going to be at a point in the United States where you have all these jobs that have been being created, but Americans aren't educated enough and, and don't have the right skill set to, to be able to perform those specific jobs that are gonna, you're gonna actually need people and not robots to do. That's the question, you know, it's like, it's like so if you, a great example, if you do have kids, you know, ensure that you, hopefully that they're in a the school that they're getting educated to the point where um, they need to um, be prepared for the jobs of 2030. 2025 and things of that nature you know that's all i'm saying so in particular jobs that require cognitive and interpersonal skills are set to grow that's what the article stated from the wall street journal i don't dispute that i actually agree with that but since most people do not even know what the new jobs are going to be but until that time i must stress uh economic teams have your economic teams start with your family i don't care but have your economic teams think like an immigrant Think outside the box of the employee box and be as strategic as possible when it comes to your spending and saving habits. I can't stress that anymore. I'm reading one book right now called The Negro in Business by Booker T. Washington. And it, I am amazed how much I did not know about how much African-Americans after slavery um, stuck together and practiced group economics, like just like you see with every other immigrant group out there nowadays, you know? And they, they put their dollars together, they ensured that the dollars circled around like they were supposed to, and they got things done. <laughs>
you know, even sometimes not having any shoes, barely being able to read, but they got things done, they figured out a way. And, you know, I always, I like to end my videos off on this one, this quote. You can't get fired if you own the company. You can always hire and fire yourself when you own the company. So the mindset has to change and we have to just try to do better and band together more and not spend so much time worrying about basketball, football, and baseball and all that stuff that has nothing to do with putting money in your pocket unless that's the industry you work in. That's a different story. So. Video went a little bit longer than I expected, but I'm very passionate about um, this, especially given the fact that automation is here and it's going to continuously grow. And you have to ask yourself the question, are you ready for the new automation economy? Hopefully you guys liked the video. Please give it a thumbs up. Please share. Please subscribe. And I hope you guys have a great day. Take care.